the years, our family's had a share of health problems. So prescriptions are a part of our life. Before we went to the big box store. We both thought it would help us save. But with the long lines and impersonal service, filling prescriptions became a chore. That's when a friend recommended DNH. Now Tristan knows our prescriptions. Brenda always helps us find the right vitamins. And after Dad's fall, Monica's been a real expert with all our home medical needs, all without the lines. Trust and service. That's our DNH. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, October the 8th. I've got Steve Johnson over here to my right, Missouri River Community Network, and you've got uh, something special coming up this weekend, right? It's true. Uh, Autumn on the Bricks. What is in that? downtown Fulton. Well, the, the Bricks is the old brick district in right, downtown right. Fulton, and they're they're doing their second annual Autumn on the Bricks. It's a fundraiser for the Art House, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, is a nonprofit art studio and 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 uh, classes and things like that right downtown uh, so it's a fundraiser it'll be going on uh, all day this coming saturday from 10 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon there'll be music uh, local cuisine local beer local wine uh, there'll be a lot of sampling there'll be 20 artists uh, that are uh, that some of them will actually be painting, painting. Right, and right. doing their art right there uh, it's actually a juried show, and uh, there's a there's several artists that are a part of the uh, Missouri Best of Missouri Hands, mm -hmm. uh, which is a you know a, a juried uh, organization uh, from people from around the state, and uh, and then the uh, 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 Fulton Farmers Market will be do kind of an expanded farmers market, so there'll be lots of good food, wow. pumpkins. There'll be a big uh, uh, pumpkin area and. Uh, so there really is something for everybody. It's true. You're going to have food, you're going to have music, you're going to have art, and you're going to have wonderful camaraderie. It's true. It will be nice. I do want to mention the, uh, the, the music. Dave Alvin from 10 to noon, uh, Joel Anderson from 1230 to 230, and Faded Youth <laughs> from 3 to 5. Oh, wait a minute. Why do you chuckle about Faded Youth? <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm fading, my youth is fading myself. Uh, but, yeah, I think they do oldies kind of. Okay, but, yeah, that's why they're called. It'll be good music. That's why they're called faded youth. Something like that. Okay, so <laughs> mark it on your calendar for this coming Saturday, October the 10th, 10 o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the afternoon, and everything you got, every, everything you want. Is that's there right. They'll be serving breakfast in the morning, uh, and then at, at 10 noon. 10 o'clock in the morning. Isn't that well, late for breakfast? it'll be sort of a brunch type thing, and then at noon they're starting. They'll start uh, selling liquor. I mean, uh, beer and beer. wine. <laughs> I know what you've got on your mind. <laughs> yeah, all right. So at noon, <laughs> at noon they'll have the uh, the lunch food. That's right. And then the beer and the wine. That's right. Okay. That's so right. mark it on your calendar this coming Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, at Fulton's Historic Brick District. That's right. Anything and, uh, else you want to add? Well, I'm just I'm representing the Missouri uh, uh, River Bluffs Association, which is kind of a regional organization promoting mm -hmm. all kinds of activities, uh, tourism, and uh, uh, local uh, areas. Uh, places to eat yeah. local food promoting local yeah. food we're going to be handing out uh sampling cheese oh. from all over the oh. area so free. we'll have about uh we'll, we'll be sampling uh free cheese and then will people be able to buy and they cheese? will be able to buy cheese from about five different cheese makers in the in the area okay all right steve johnson thank you so much for coming by and telling us about you. uh autumn on the bricks this That's coming right. saturday That's in right. fulton see you there all right Hey, now we turn to Rachel Mutro. That's right. I pronounced it right. You did. Not Mutrix, you. Rachel Mutro. And you're here from MU Health to tell us about the Missouri Telehealth Network. What is that? That's right. So Missouri Telehealth Network is a department within the School of Medicine, and we got some state funding to start a new program this year called Show Me Echo. ECHO stands for Extension for Community Healthcare Outcomes, and it's a telehealth program, um, not like the telehealth that we normally do. So we normally have a specialty provider on one side of a camera mm -hmm. and a patient on the other side, and the doctor can treat the patient using video conferencing. This program doesn't Wait, do so that. Wait, so this is going on now? Yes, it started. So how 
the, the doctor is talking to the patient, seeing them on a television monitor. Right. That's what we normally do in telemedicine, and we've been doing it for 20 years. For 20 years? Yes. Where have I been? <laughs> but this new funding, we got new state funding for this program, and instead of doing it like that, we're training primary care providers in rural areas on a specific disease state in an interdisciplinary way. So one of our echoes is chronic pain management. And so we have a chronic pain specialist, a pharmacist, a psychologist, and a nurse to train primary care providers to better take care of their own patients with chronic pain so they don't have to refer them to a specialist and have them drive all the way to an urban area. Okay, but are you doing this with over the television monitors? That's correct. So we're using video conferencing um, and it's web-based video conferencing that's available everywhere. And if, in order to participate, all a provider needs is a device with a front-facing camera, like an iPad, even their phone. Mm -hmm. And they can join up and they get free continuing medical education credits and they get to keep their own patients in their own communities and take care and of them. And do you find that this is as effective as meeting the person face to face and talking face to face in many cases yes so it's been um, telemedicine has been studied for more than 20 years and telemedicine in general um, depending on the specialty does as good of a job as seeing them in person now mm -hmm. the gold standard would continue that a doctor would want to see a patient in person if they could however if the patient can't travel Mm -hmm. to see them, then we would use video conferencing for that. And the tele, that's, telemedicine. That's called telemedicine. It's called telemedicine. You're going to have to fill me in on this a little bit. because uh, So you're doing all the vital signs. The doctor, is, the doctor who is on the other end of the camera sees all the vital signs as if he were there with that patient. It depends on what they need, what the doctor needs in order to treat and diagnose a patient. But sure, someone in that building could do vitals and then relay them, you know, over video. A nurse could tell them what they are. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we're doing telepsychiatry where the doctor doesn't need to get um, vitals ahead of time. They see the telepsychiatry. patient. Telepsychiatry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that really has come a long way. Yes. It's actually telepsychiatry is the number one use of telemedicine in Missouri. Um, but in the case of ECHO, we would be training the primary care providers to do some of this on their own. Okay. And so they don't, so we don't have to use telemedicine to the patient. And so the patient doesn't have to travel. Okay. If people want more information on this, where can they, they can go, go to, to find out? They can go showmeecho.com. And it will tell the whole story. It will. Okay. It will. It's well, this is program. really interesting. Yeah. I, I had no idea that telemedicine had been going on for 20 years. Yeah. It's great. It really helps the patients. Okay. Rachel, thank you so much for coming Thanks. by. Rachel Mutral. That's right. And your two nephews are over there watching Aunt Rachel. Hi, Jack and Justin. Okay. <laughs> Out of time for today. Tomorrow, Bradford Farms and Parent Link. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director, Kevin Casson, And our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Miles. Bye-bye.